Well, my friends, here we go again. Another winter's day. Well, let's see what we can do. Talk to you in a minute. Well, good day, my friends. Uh, here we are, still in the middle of the winter. I'm going to tell you something today. The most important part of your body is your hands, your wrists, and your forearm. If you want to really attain any amount of proficiency in archery, you're going to have to do some extra exercises. You have to have strong hands. Your hands are the parts of your body that holds the bow. They're extremely important. If your hands are weak, you will torque and twist and fight the draw. It's no good. You have to have strong hands. You have to have strong wrists so that you can control that curl. You have to have strong forearms. This is where the strength is. And this arm has to be able to be able to relax. But you have to be strong. Okay? So I'm going to show you a couple of exercises that will help you out and give you that strength so that you can control that bow. <laughs> I'll be back in a minute. Okay, my friends, so the wrists, the wrists are very important. It's the wrist that controls the twisting of the hands on the forearm. So you have to, you or you need a smooth transition as you roll. You don't want to be jerking. You want to be able to roll. It takes strength. So an exercise like these little springs and do it on both sides will help you to be able to control your wrists so that your hands go smoothly into position and you see the transition of the arrow onto the target. You need strong wrists. Okay? This is the way you do it. I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> You need strong shoulders. Any kind of shoulder exercise is good. You know, your shoulders take a tremendous beating. They get beat up more than any other part in archery. So you need strong shoulders. You know, you need to be able to hold that out there. And also, I find that crusher exercises, I'll show you in a minute, really help because the crusher exercises counteract the puller exercises the crusher muscles balance the puller muscles okay but you've got to be able to hold it out there okay another exercise that's really really important is those expanding muscles those muscles that allow you to pull that bow apart okay so an exercise like this helps create a bit too you know, so you just have to do them and this will make you stronger so that you can pull that bow because you want to pull that bow <laughs> right be stronger than your bow, then you'll have control. Okay? So you want to do this kind of stuff. Also, this exerciser actually has another little hand exerciser on there. Doesn't do any harm to have strong hands. <laughs> want to shoot a bow? 
a rowboat. Swing an axe. Do stuff like this. It will help out. Okay. Back in a minute. So, you know, my friends, in general, anything that helps you to build up the power in your arms is worthwhile, you know? You just have to do it. And I do a lot of exercises, you know, but I'm not going to sit here and do squats and sit-ups and everything. I just want to show you some of the exercises that I will do to make my arms strong. Because in all honesty, in all honesty, it's your arms from here to here that do it. There's more control in your arms than that twisting of the actual bow. Much more important to be able to control those arms than your stance, than your knee, than your three under, split finger, all those kinds of things, you know, your head angle, your cant, all those things are factors, but the two little boys are the final control of that bow. And if you don't have control of your arms from your elbows to your hands, you're not really going to make it. I just know this from experience, so I'm imparting this to you. Get the power in here. You've got that control. You can tell where it is. That's the best I can tell you. Right? That movement. Pull. Push. <laughs> That's all I can show you guys. Talk to you later. Hello, my friends. So, we're over at the armory right now. Welcome aboard. There's a, a few things that I need to explain to you rather than just show you, you me shooting and going, Oh, look, I hit the target. That's what most guys do, right? Oh, look, I hit the target. Watch me. <laughs> Anyhow, watch me. Now, um, the thing that I'm going to talk about today is the positive anchor. You know how we've lots of times showed you how it's the pressure in the arm that will shoot straight, that you don't actually have to touch an anchor, you can just judge the angle and do it, and that's true, but also if we can get it right under the eye, it will also be much better for aiming. So yes, we can shoot from here and shoot from there and all this kind of stuff, but let's talk about aiming now. Now, look, I told you how to shoot at the target, anchor here, see where it goes, shoot at the target, anchor there, shoot at the target, anchor there, shoot at the target, anchor here, shoot at the target, anchor here, until you find a spot on your face when you're looking along and you're touching that spot. It goes straight. So we're not saying something specific like touch the corner of the mouth, touch the ear, touch the back of your jaw, you know, touch your tooth. We're not saying that. What we're saying is for you, take a few shots and just keep experimenting. Not dogma, but experiment until you find a spot that works. For me, that spot is right back here by my lower back tooth, okay, on my jaw, which is the same spot that Howard Hill used to use evidently. But for me, with the shape of my face, that works for me. So experiment and you'll find that. Now. The thing is, we are going to make a positive touch today, okay? Positive. It's going to be touching it, not touch, don't touch, or off to the side. It's a definite touch. So that's what we're going to be doing. Also, I want to explain the power in a bow. There's absolutely no point in pre-aiming. 
when that arrow gets back, it will not be in the same spot as your pre-aim. You can, or I can, because I've done it lots of times too, you know, we're looking on that arrow, we just get it perfect, right? But by the time your arm comes back here, it, you know, things move. So pre-aiming, though we like to do it, has nothing to do with hitting the target. The aim isn't done until you're in your anchor, not until you're all the way back before you really aim. Any kind of what I would call pre-aiming is pre-setting up, you know, uh, getting yourself in a position so that when you get back you're going to be pretty much on the target and that makes aiming easier. Uh, something I can show you is something like this. You see this? This is an open stance where you stand with one foot off to the side of the other one. And here I'm standing with one foot behind the other one. Now, we can put our feet anywhere and hit the target as long as that pressure is correct in that bow. But this kind of thing, watch what happens. If I open up my feet like that, that open stance I was showing you, so my feet are more or less side by side, and I draw back, when my arm comes straight back, it's about there. Now, you see that? My hand has to come in that far to get to my magic spot. That's natural for me, right? That's a natural. But you see that? I have to go that far. Now watch what happens when I put one foot behind the other. So now I've got one foot behind the other and I draw back. Do you see how my hand is very, very close to my face already? You see? So an open now I've got to start adjusting or standing this way for me and I don't have to adjust very much. So that's something I want to point out to you that stance isn't completely critical. However, there is a position on your body where if you stand there, you will start to draw the line closer to your eye automatically. So experiment again. Stand this way, stand this way, even put your feet farther back to the, uh, to the left. You'll see that it will adjust your line. So that's something that you can do. The, um, the, the power in a bow is not found until the bow is about three quarter ways drawn. The great Horace Ford used to, they said, pause four inches in front of his face and that's where he swore the aim was. Well, the truth is that it's kind of true. If I do a pre-aim and just put it up, everything's going to move by the time I get back here. But if I, let's see if we can see it here, if I draw when I get back to about here, you're going to see my left roll and the right roll. It's when the pressure is on that bow that you can get it straight. Okay, so anyhow, out here is nothing but watch. Back here, it will just straighten out. And it's because there's pressure in there. It's the pressure that does it. That's what straightens you out. So. Don't even consider aiming until you get almost back, oh, you know, about three quarters back or seven eighths back, or whatever you want to call it. When the pressure's in here, that's when the bow will control your two arms and you can let them, the two little boys, fall one in behind the other. Hey, you know? So uh, that's, that's something else. Uh, we uh, also, uh, in all honesty, I do find both eyes better. And I use one eye and then I use two eyes and sometimes I'll squint and I do different things depending on the light and the angle and stuff. But in general, you can, you know, we're looking at the target, not the arrow. The arrow has nothing to do with it right now. This is everything. This is straight. Okay? Only by looking at the target can I tell that that arrow is over there. I'm not looking at that arrow, but I know it's there. I know it's there. I know it's there. There. Because I'm looking with both eyes. Okay, so that's why we do it. If I 
squint, you see, I can I can still line it up, but it's not as good. It's just not as good. Even though the vision is slightly fuzzier on my left, on my right, straight. I can just tell. So that's why we uh, use both eyes. Um, Anyhow, I think that's some of the basic stuff there. We want to hold it off and also look, when you're going to aim, do not pre-aim or anything like that. But what we want to do is just put it up without looking at the bow or anything, just put it up. But do you see where it is? You see the trough? That's the trough. That's the V. So I, I'm not specially putting the tip on or the bow on the side or anything. I'm just putting it there. It will. It'll go there. Okay, so no pre-aim. Okay? And uh, that's what we do. You know, we look at the target, put one foot behind the other, look through the window, and also, I do a high draw. I do not draw way down here. Because if you draw down here, you will anchor and your arrow will be on an angle and you will shoot high a lot of times. So what I do is draw high and let it come down because my elbow comes down, so I let it come down to my jaw. Okay? So again, I will look at my target set my head, set my feet, look through the window, get it up there. Now when it's three quarters, I will let it relax and pop -o. That's what we're doing. Anyhow, that's uh, enough for now. I'll be back in a minute and talk to you. Well, guys, I've, uh, I've noticed a couple of other things lately, too. And uh, one is, they're very similar, you know, but if I draw and bring my finger right onto my magic spot and relax my arm, or relax my arms, upper body, my arrow will go off to the left. About, nine out of, or about eight out of 10 times. Sometimes it'll be, once in 10, let's say, it'll be straight. Once in 10, it'll be on the right, and I'll just swivel it back on. But usually, it will be on the left and I can correct it simply by simply by it's on the left simply by rolling the bow a little bit that's if I'm not pressing but if I do the same draw go to the same spot relax my arm but instead of relaxing my upper body as much I, uh, I press forward press forward with the, the left, it'll go straight. So here we're doing things that are very similar. That's how, how uh, confusing and complicated it can be. Do exactly the same thing, but without pressing forward, arrow goes off, correct, by rolling it on, or uh, get it out there, get it straight, and press forward, and it won't roll off. So, you know, it's an art, it's an art. That's all I can say, you know. So let's see if I can uh, uh, do the uh, the relaxed arms, and if you can see that. So anyhow, you know, again, the eye is on, the foot is back behind the other one. I'm looking at the target, no pre-aim. I put my bow up, and bango, it's right in the window, okay? But watch, we draw high, get it there, relax, and now well, that one, I... That one didn't go off. It just went dead center because it felt right. Let's see if I can do it. You know, sometimes your tip will be to the right. You've got to swivel back, get it back on. Sometimes it will be perfect. Sometimes, for some reason, it's often off to the left. You've got to be able to do more than one thing. This idea of you do the exact same thing every time. You know, this is an art, and it's never exactly the same every time. Each time, it's a specific shot. Anyhow, let's see if I can uh, uh, get this off to the side again. Okay, so now she's off to the side, 
and there I got her. I rolled it a little bit and I got her. Okay? I prefer not having to roll it. I prefer when it's there and I press it forward. It gives me a little more uh, speed, I suppose. Uh, and, and it's not a big jerk forward. It's just a press. You'd hardly notice it. I know it. I know I'm doing it. I know I'm transferring the pressure from my elbow to my hand. I'm pressing from my elbow to my hand. Okay. Uh, now we'll do it the other way. We'll uh, just try to, to, to press forward. So it's, you know, eye on, foot in the right spot, uh, no pre-aim, put the bow up, there it is. And so, you now draw high. When it gets three quarters way back, uh, you know, bring it into your jaw. And I pushed it forward, and bang, both of those arrows are right in the same spot. You know, just for a fart around, just, you know, still going up. Showing you his shots, but just so you see, that was done in two different ways, and there's the hits too. Okay, well, you know it works. Okay. Back in a minute. Well, my friends, for you fellas that enjoy weapons, here's the. The scimitar. This is the hand of Allah. It was designed so that it would slice. It's uh, fairly light and uh, has a curved blade. The uh, the Arabs made these out of Damascus steel, but anyhow, they're uh, quite efficient little weapon. It's got a good point. It's a good whacker. So, if you uh, like this kind of thing, here's <laughs> that kind of thing. Also, uh, this is an interesting article. Now, this is a bow, Indo-Persian bow it's called. You can see that it's all inlaid with silver. It was made out of Damascus steel. Now, this is a knockoff, so really, this is not a real bow, but uh, uh, they came apart, so you can take them apart. Again, Indo-Persian, very, very good shooting bows. They use them on their horses a lot. I guess you can see that okay, eh? I was just fascinated with the uh, inlaid silver that they have. So there's a lot of, uh, a lot of history in archery and uh, a great variety of bows. Anyhow, I'll talk to you later. Bye now. Hey guys, so enough archery talk. I'm just going to take a couple of shots and have a bit of fun. And uh, I was thinking about a few things like how important it is to respect our ancestors. I think that's a big deal. Sometimes it's called ancestor worship, but really it's just reverence for the past and your ancestors. You know, stick your eye on there. Put your foot back. Look at the trough. Draw high. Let it roll when it gets three quarters over. <laughs> Another thing that's uh, important is uh, to be grateful, to be thankful for all you have. It's really good for your mental health to, to uh, you know, to understand that. Yeah, gratitude. Grateful for all you have. Because it always could be worse.
press forward a little bit. Remember, your forearms, your hands, and your wrist. Those are the two little boys. That's what controls your archery. It's a great hobby. It's a great lifestyle. Well, there's the business calling, so I gotta go. Well, my friends, I just had a call, and a guy out west has ordered this uh, English longbow. It's a, uh, a 30 pound. Uh, Robin Hood style, it's called, and it's made out of hickory, and uh, he's a, a reenactor, so he wants a light bow, you know, 30 pounds. But uh, anyhow, all I want to say to all my Viking friends, keep rowing, you'll get to the other side. <laughs> okay, boys, I'll see you later. Okay, I guess that's it for today. Um, again, I've got to go to work, but uh, just for the fun of it. It's uh, just, you know, a place to practice, but you can see that if we draw high, get it right to the magic spot, relax our arm, push forward, we can hit that target. Anyhow, you guys have some fun, and I'll talk to you later. Bye now.